All right, let's talk about this terrifying moment when a boulder hit your car. What happened? I was driving through a place called La Tuna Canyons, Kevin, a place where I've never, ever, ever been in my life. And not only that, but I never listened to my GPS. And today, that day, I listened to my GPS. My GPS took me that way. Wow. I'll never do it again. I'll never listen to my GPS again. Stick to the highways, Flav. Never listen. Never take another shortcut again. Ever. Yeah, yeah, because that, yeah, that shortcut was getting ready to cut me short. Where were you headed to, Flav? I was leaving Vegas. I was coming from Vegas on my way to Bel Air. Oh. To my studio to do my podcast. And I didn't know that there were falling rock. You know what I'm saying? But I seen a lot of rocks in the street and everything. So I'm like, okay, you got some falling rocks around here. There was no signs of falling rocks or anything like that, you know? And as I'm driving, Kevin, all I see is this big giant object coming across my windshield, man, and then it hit the street. And as soon as this boulder hit, hit the street on the right side of my car, my car, the rock grazed my car. I'm gonna get it up inside the yard. You know what I'm saying? That's a lot of damage for all, and that, it, let, let's just clarify to everybody. It wasn't just a rock that hit your car. It was a, it was boulder, a boulder that yeah, fell off a mountain. It did it significant a damage. And they're saying that a second later, and that would have hit you. Check this out. I was doing like maybe 36, 37 miles per hour, right? When that boulder came down in front of my car. If I was doing like 42 or 43 miles per hour, that would have pushed me up a few seconds later. That boulder would have crushed the hood and the windshield of my car. So I just grazed, I just brushed so, death just like that, man. I mean, God is good. God wasn't ready for me, Kev. I think he wanted me to be here sitting, talking to you about it. Um, what happens the second that it hits, what do you do then? What do you do? The only thing you can do is keep going and get out the way and hope that another one don't come down to hit you. Did and that's you... what I did, because I drove, I, dro I drove away in fear, because I didn't know if there were more of those big rocks coming, coming out of the mountain or not. You know, so I drove down a few miles, and then I got out and I looked at my car. And when I got out, Kevin, there was a guy that was pulling over with me, and he was signaling to me to turn to, to roll the window down. I rolled my window down. He said, hey, I seen that back there. I said, you did? And then as soon as I got out the car, he was like, oh my God, flavor effing flame. Get out of here, man. He said, flame, that boulder almost killed you. I said, yeah. So you felt like clearly you're shaking. You get out of the car, this guy recognizes you, but you're shaking and yes. you're still Kevin, traumatized right by this. now I'm still traumatized right now bro I'm seeing flashbacks I'm seeing flashbacks like crazy right now man you know when I went to to, to go to sleep last night that's all I kept seeing was that big rock falling in front of my car man and almost man listen God is good man do you hear me he wasn't ready for me okay he wasn't so ready for me Kev how are you dealing with this experience because I know it left you shaken but how are you what are you going to do for yourself to deal with this experience the only thing that I can do for myself is just try to leave it in in the past now and just move forward because I'm grateful to be here you know so I ain't got no choice well I mean it happened yesterday so by me worrying about it it's not going to help me today yeah listen it almost feels like a second lease on life, doesn't it? Like yes, you know, you got a yes, yes. Hey, hey, I feel like a cat that just got another life. Mm, mm. You are also celebrating one year of sobriety. Yes. Congratulations on thank that. Thank you, thank you, How Kevin. are you feeling and how are you thank dealing you, Kevin. with that? Man, I feel so great inside right now, you know what I'm saying? And this is something that I always wanted for myself. I just could never really grip it, mm -hmm. but Finally, God gave me the strength to be able to grip it and hold on to this. And this is something that my moms would want for me too. I know she's looking down on me and she's proud of me because she always wanted me to live a clean and sober life. Being that I'm not smoking cigarettes, my wind is a lot longer, you know what I'm saying? Um, being that I'm not drinking alcohol, my appetite is a lot healthier and heavier now, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So 
I, I feel I feel good. And then also a thing that really helps me stay in the game is I have a lot of people rooting, rooting for me and cheering me on and patting me on the back about my sobriety. And, and, and I don't want to let them down, you know, but yeah. mainly I don't want to let myself down. People may not also know that you have even more on your plate. You have an upcoming residency in Las Vegas. What can fans expect from that? Uh, the only thing I can say is they can expect the best when they come to Vegas, man. I'm working on a residency now out of the Plaza Hotel. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a talk variety show. It's a variety show yeah. that I'm coming with, you know, and I'm going to have all walks of life coming through my stage. You know what I'm saying? Even people like yourself, once I get to show come up and on, running, man. Kevin Frazier, I would love for you to come on my stage and let me sit down and interview you, just like you're interviewing me. This is so funny, Flav, we go so far back. You know, you That's call, right. I'm there. We go back. Come on, yes, don't, you don't even have to mess man. around. Um, and then there's also a documentary you're working on. Yeah, I'm working on a documentary right now. You know what I'm saying? I hooked up with my boy Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And his company to do my documentaries. What will fans learn in this documentary? They're going to learn the real life of Flavor Flav and how Flavor Flav got to be where he is right now today. All right, can we talk about when you reinvented yourself with the flavor of love? It is such an iconic TV show. <laughs> I've got a nice big mansion. But none of these things means nothing. Hello? Hello? without a woman to spend it with. <laughs> Could you, first of all, ever see yourself doing another show like that again? Honestly, I never see myself doing a show like that in the first uh, place. <laughs> but I'm glad that they did bring it to the table, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, um, I, I, had, I had fun doing it. I ain't gonna lie. Three Are you seasons. still looking for love? Are you still looking huh? for love? Man, I find love every day I come out my house, Kevin. <laughs> I'm, I'm no, no. Sure. But I are you still in, looking for the I right one? I walked in your studio and found love. You know well, what I'm that's saying? That's people that love you, but I'm talking about <laughs> a love, like as in your love life. I, you found a woman that makes you happy. I, I'm, 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 we're still looking. We're wow. still looking. Okay. We're still looking. Do you do you keep? We're, we're, do you... we're still looking. I kind I I I think I kind of got my finger on something. Okay, I can Put respect that. that. I think I, I kind of got that. my finger on something. Did you keep in touch with any of the women from Flavor of Love? No, I haven't kept in okay. touch with none of them. But I've been watching them from afar. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, uh, and I'm proud of a, of a well, few of them that made names. I'm going to throw a couple job. names out here. I want to, I just want to hear what you think, okay? When I say their name, you just give me something, all right? Um, let's start with Pumpkin. Yo, Pumpkin, where you at? Hi. Pumpkin? Yeah. Oh, she was a nut, man. I, <laughs> I, 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 haven't, I haven't seen Pumpkin in a long time, but I've seen a picture of her, and I've seen a change. Hoops. That's why I love basketball. That's my girl, Nikki Alexander. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Out of all of the girls that came through my show, she was the finest one. Wow, okay, I hear you on that. How about New York? New York was the nuttiest one. Hey, you can't help but love New York, man. New York is really who she is. You know what I'm saying? And, and not only that, but she's not a bad girl. She's a good girl. I love New York. Yeah, no. Love her, man. Yeah, yeah, I love her, man. She's mad cool. Do you keep in touch with Brigitte Nielsen? I haven't spoken with Bridget in a long time, man. No? I miss Bridget. I miss Gita. Yeah. Yeah, I miss her, man. That was my that was my pal. That's yeah. my not was my pal. She's still my pal. Yeah, right. she's one of the best people, man, you'll ever really want to know and meet. Let's be honest. You're ready to do another flavor of love, aren't you? Thinking about it, Kevin. It's coming, isn't it? Thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. It's it's up in the air, you know what I'm saying? And and we would and if we do, we were talking about letting Chris Jenner produce it. Genius. Everything that lady touches turns to she's gold, a genius. man. Yeah, she's a genius. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I am so glad that we can have this conversation today because you are here and you yes. escaped. I yes. mean, it was close, but you escaped. Yes, a, I, I really did a Kevin. tough situation. G I G. Everybody has a gig, a G I G. But yeah. my new gig is God is good. I'm here to talk to you about it, Kevin, man, and I want to be here for years and years and years to come to talk more 
more with you, man.